Cheesy Panini and welcome to another episode of my building series where I'm joined by my cursed sapling Charky and Wisp Barnaby where I show you guys how to turn this into this Last episode I made subways and roads for my city and today we are going to make our very own subway station complete with the entrance, the subway platform and a mechanism that would make your cart slow down when it's approaching the station and a mechanism that will announce your arrival. What's that you say? Is that really possible? Yes it is! Also I want to make things clear, the materials I will list later are materials that I used for my design, but it doesn't mean that you should feel limited to using just those materials or limited to doing what I did word for word. Feel free to experiment and let your imagination run wild. Anyways, enough with the chit chat, let's do this! Now before we get started, here are a list of items that you're definitely going to need if you want to follow this tutorial. Now I know that not all of these items are freely accessible and some can only be obtained later in the game. So if you just want to build but can't get a hold of these items, you can use the Builder's Workshop by Tell. It's a map that contains all the items found in the game and I've been using it intensively for a long time so I'd absolutely recommend it. You can also use inventory editors like Terra Saver, which is web-based, and Terra Inv Edit. I haven't used Terra Saver, but I have used Inv Edit a few times before, and it's really good. If, however, you use T Mod or open to using mods, get Heroes Mod by Hero and Joppa Jelly, or the Cheat Sheet by Joppa Jelly. Those are fantastic mods for building, and I have been using them quite often with no problem so far. Word of caution, though. If you are going to use mods, make sure to always back up. Links for these are in the description below. For the subway station entrance, I decided to visit my good friend Google and search for some pictures of subway stations. And I came across this picture of the Gumyoji station entrance. There were five design elements I particularly liked. The rounded horizontal signage, the glass windows, the posters, benches, and the downward staircase. And I'm going to show you guys how I translated these elements into my own design in Terraria. I initially placed two benches so I would have a good idea of how wide my subway station entrance should be. And after I was happy with that, I proceeded to place my platinum brick walls just behind them and made two pillars that would act as a support to my roof, which was made of platinum bricks. I then proceeded to place the glass walls in between my platinum brick walls and left a row of gaps just under the platinum brick roofing and the floor. Then I placed some signs on the wall which acts as posters. You can actually use paintings instead for this. And then I placed a couple of lamp posts for light. Now this one was something I just tried and I thought it looked pretty good despite it not being in the final design. I put some lead fences above and below the glass wall as an accent. Now looking at it as it is, it actually looks more like a bus stop and it could also be a message board of some kind. So you can actually use this design for that. But of course, we're trying to make a subway station entrance to today, so I'm just gonna extend this diagonally, hammer the bottom end of the roof to slant it like so, and put a sort of opening at the end, so people can still pass through. It was actually at this point that I decided to change the lead fence to adamantite beam walls for a more solid look. Now this one is completely optional and you can actually do without it, but I put some Martian platforms by the opening and hammered it to achieve this look, which adds some interesting detail to the build. Next I proceeded to paint the adamantite beam walls white. Now you may have been wondering why the roof was slanted in the first place. This is to show direction towards the entrance, which I'll be digging just below here. Three tile columns are what we need for the stairs, which we will be doing later on. But I'll be digging two more tile columns and put sandstone bricks on both sides so that it somewhat frames the stairs. 
I used grey brick wall as the background for it. Back up to the surface, I painted a 3x4 portion of the wall with shadow paint to create something that will look like an entryway. Then I put a layer of stone slab back to the road and used actuators with an actuation rod to put the blocks in the background so that you can pass through it without it being obvious that there was a hole in it. To make the hole even more inconspicuous or less obvious, I painted the stone slab white to lighten it up to almost the same tone as the normal stone slabs. Next, I used Martian platform for the stairs and hammered it to get the same effect as the Martian platforms I made earlier. Then I activated two rows of platforms so that when you press down when you're at the entrance, you fall directly below the stone slab, giving it the illusion that you just entered the subway. Now you can retain that detail if you want, or you can just actuate one row so that you can still jump up if you want to. So it's more of an aesthetic versus function in this case. Later on though, I actually got this idea to paint an entryway below as well so it would be more obvious that the door leads underground. However, when you paint the Martian platforms with shadow paint, the glowing lights are retained so you can't achieve the desired effect. So what I did was, I got rid of the three rows of platforms Place the wooden platform instead and use shadow paint on it. So now, it looks like an entryway and since there's a hidden platform, there's enough height for me to be able to jump back up. Lastly, I painted the first two Martian platform rows black and grey and made the rest white so that it would look as if the stairs are coming from the back to the front. Now this last bit about the entryway was just added and wasn't even supposed to be in this video. While I was editing, I remembered the technique with teleporters I saw builders like Fury do. FYI, go and check that guy out, his builds are awesome. He actually inspired a few of my builds. Anyways, I solidified the asphalt blocks and stone slab that I actuated earlier. It might be for the best that I do so, so people who happen to be walking don't accidentally fall through. Fall through. Fall through. I don't know how to say it. Fall through. Blech. Whatever. Don't forget to remove the actuators afterwards. You don't want those to suddenly activate or deactivate when we start putting some wires in. First, I put a teleporter by the entryway and placed a lever and several switches. FYI, you don't really have to put so many switches. I just chose to do it so that when we paint this with shadow paint, you can click anywhere in that space and it will activate. Of course, teleporters act as blocks and are solid, so it's best to actuate them so you can still pass through. Don't worry, they still work even though they've been actuated. Next, I wired the teleporter and the switches and lever with a different wire color from the wires of the lights. This is so the wires don't mix up and start activating things they aren't supposed to activate. Then, we put another teleporter down below. Since the steps were hammered earlier, you can't place anything on it, so you are going to have to revert it to its original form. After that, I place the teleporter, which is actuated as well, the lever and the switches. Now, this bit is very important. Since the lever and the upper switch kind of touches the yellow wire, it also triggers the lights, which isn't our intention. So instead of the same setup as the one upstairs, I only placed three switches to avoid the yellow wire. After everything is done, I painted everything with shadow paint. Of course, alternatively, you can place the yellow wires above the switches. But I went with this method anyway, so I could explain it, I guess. <laughs> so it's up to you how you want to do it. I'll explain the rest of the design underground later. Let's go back up to the surface. Back up to the surface, I continued my platinum brick roof by adding another layer of bricks and hammered them down to slant it. However, the styles of the bricks just didn't seem that appealing to me much together that way. So what I did was, I put some glass in between every other brick to make it look a little bit more classy. For the heading or signage of the subway entrance, I initially used amethyst gem spark blocks because it gives off a really nice glow and it's especially radiant at night. 
However, I wanted a more rounded design, just like the one in my reference. So I put some silly purple balloon blocks instead and placed amethyst gem spark walls to retain that purple glow. Now if you want the same shade of purple as the one in my final product, I used silly green purple balloon instead and painted it deep purple. I also painted the gem spark wall purple so the colors would match a little better. After that, I added a column of platinum brick wall that acts as a support for the roof. I also arranged and painted the signs and benches and added a trash can. Next, I put a couple of glass lanterns painted white for additional light. Then I placed a sign at the roof painted purple which indicates the name of the station which I randomly named Camly. After that, I put some Martian platforms painted white and hammered down to match the ones on the other side. Speaking of signs, instead of a wooden sign, you could use letter statues instead to name your stations. The downside to this is that the number of letters you use for your station will be limited to the length of the roof. This is why I didn't go with this design. But if you're fine with that, I do recommend this one. That's Mr. Speller by the way. He used to be the character I used for placing statues since I loaded his inventory with him. For the design of the entryway, I actually experimented a bit before I got to the final design. One of my experiments consisted of sun plate blocks painted white and actuated as well as Martian platforms at the corners of the entryway to form an arc. The other version I had consisted of just grey brick walls instead but retain the sun plate blocks at the right. It was only after I decided on cobalt brick walls with white and deep purple paint for the underground that I changed the entryway for the third and final time to match it. So there you go, we've got ourselves a subway station entrance. Okay guys, when making the subway platform, the main thing you have to remember is that the blocks you place must not block the railway. So you have two options for this, platforms and actuated blocks. I actually went through a few variations before I settled with my final design, and I'll be showing you the pros and cons of each design. First one I did, I used some sandstone bricks with hammered granite platforms and painted them white. I only made a small one at the beginning because I actually intended it to be just a drop off point before I thought of actually making it into a legit subway platform. So from that little segment, I eventually extended it further and also added white painted glass lanterns by the stairs. Eventually I tried painting the bricks purple to match the surface entrance. Then I took some grey brick wall and placed them below the sandstone bricks so it doesn't look like the bricks were just floating there. It would look like an extension instead. You can use different kinds of walls for it and I actually tried it with cog walls and it did look pretty nice and it looks as if it's connected to the railway and it's responsible for making the carts move. In another variation, I extended it further and used amethyst gem spark walls below with silly purple balloon blocks instead of the sandstone bricks. It matches perfectly with the roof at the entrance, but I thought that it was way too bright for a platform, so I decided to match the balloon blocks with grey brick walls painted deep purple instead. I actuated the blocks as well, and I was pretty happy with this design, and I would have used this for the final version if it weren't for just one tiny detail that I overlooked. I hammered the platforms I placed, so this means that I can't place any items above it. Now I could just revert them back to their original look, but it would look weird, like they're floating above the blocks. You could put a wall below it, but it just feels like it defeats the purpose of the platforms in the first place because I placed them there as an accent. We could remove the platforms and retain the blocks, but the blocks can't hold any furniture if they were actuated. If we don't actuate them on the other hand, you can't pass through the railway at all. So let's fast forward a bit so I can show you what I did instead. I removed the silly purple balloon blocks and placed the platforms where the blocks used to be and retained the amethyst gem spark blocks 
which I painted purple with grey brick walls painted deep purple just like what I did at the subway entrance. Let's move on to the walls this time. I used references for it as well. In the first photo, notice that the walls are tiled and in the second, the tiled walls are only used until the entrance of the tunnel. From all of the available walls in Terraria, I thought that the wall that resembles it the most are the cobalt brick walls. So I used those and painted the walls white. Now it may seem a bit too much like a bathroom but by painting a line across it like the one in the picture, it might still look like a bathroom but now it's got a little more flair. Fun fact! It was in 1904 when 3x6 inch tiles were first used in New York subway station by designers Heinz and Lafarge. They used it because it didn't stain and was easy to clean. On top of that, the white tiles had the additional advantage of reflecting light. It was later on that those tiles started appearing in bathrooms, kitchens, and so on. Yes, that's right, those tiles were used in subways before bathrooms. Okay, back to building. For some extra details, I placed some benches and a trash can and initially decided to go with grey paint because it stands out from the background more than white. Next, I took some adamantite walls and placed them at the right side of the stairs and painted them white with a black square in the middle. This gives off an illusion of a tinted glass with an opening just like in the subway booths. I even placed some sandstone brick walls below and painted it purple to complete the look. I also put in an announcement box, which we will be wiring later, and some signs painted white near the benches and the booth. A good way to make the build interesting and somewhat interactive is to create some kind of story behind it. Not necessarily something like a novella or something like an adventure map, but something that makes it feel like people are actually living there. For example, this sign says danger, do not walk on the rails, while this other sign has instructions on how to apply for a subway card, stuff like that. I think it's something people might find interesting to see when they visit your world. At some point while making the platform, I thought it might be a good idea to have a drop off section or a section intended for where you ride or get off the rails. So I painted the walls of the middle section with deep purple paint. I repositioned the benches the signs, the announcement box, and the trash can. I also changed the bench's color to deep purple this time. Then I took a Martian chest and painted it purple so it retains the gray steel color and only changed the color of the glowing light. It's a nice centerpiece, but it's also a nice place to put mechanical carts so people who visit your world and don't have mechanical carts can take one from the chest. Speaking of putting stuff in the chests, you can also put random stuff in your trash cans, maybe even the unwanted items you accidentally pick up while building. It does give your visitors a reason to snoop in your garbage. And I know Pokemon did that before. You can actually use that concept in adventure maps. Maybe the player needs to find a particular item and it was in one of these trash cans. That's something to keep in mind. So there it is. You now have a subway platform. I first had this idea for making a slowing mechanism for my railway when I entered the friend's world. I showed him an earlier version of my subway before and he got the idea to make one for his own world. And what he did was, he placed colored torches that would let you know if a stop was coming soon. And I thought, that was brilliant. And then I thought, Maybe I could make a mechanism that would automatically slow you down when you're approaching your stop. Now I'm not going to show you every single trial and error I did for this one because it was a lot and it could get confusing. So I am just going to show you what worked and why it works. For this, you're going to need booster tracks. Booster tracks makes the speed of your cart go faster when you pass them. but only if you are moving at the same direction as the booster tracks. However, if you pass them in the opposite direction, you will either slow down, go to a complete stop, or simply change direction. We are aiming to make the cart slow down. I learned a few things in my experiments. 
One is if you put too many booster tracks together, you will go to a complete stop. But you have to exit the cart to get out. And in this tutorial, we are trying to make the cart slow down. So it's important that there are spaces in between each booster track. Putting in too much space will slowly make your cart stop, but it could take way too long. So you need a good balance. Of all my prototypes, the best one I made was the three booster tracks with four spaces in between for both the left and the right side. For the left side, the booster tracks were facing the left and for the right side, the booster tracks were facing the right. This way, if you ride the rails and go right, the booster tracks will boost your cart. But if you pass by it from the right side to the left, it will slow down your cart and boost it up again by the time you reach the next booster tracks that are facing the left. However, if you place it that way, you can only ride at the center of the platform for the booster tracks to work as intended. This also made the amount of time for the cart to slow down very short. So I adjusted the booster tracks to be placed just at the edges of the platform. So now you have a decent amount of time for the chance to stop at the station. Another thing I learned was that it was important that you pick up speed before you pass through the booster tracks that are of the opposite direction. Because if you don't, you will just be pushed back. With that in mind, this particular mechanism with the booster tracks is only effective if you have a mechanical cart equipped. So yeah, it can be very useful to have some mechanical carts lying around in your subway station for those people who don't have them. And now, our railway slowing mechanism works. Of course, the subway is not complete without conductor announcement saying, you have arrived at blah blah blah, blah and such. To create a mechanism that announces your arrival, you're going to need an announcement box like this one over here that I placed beforehand. First off, let's type our message in the announcement box by right-clicking it. It works just like a sign, but the special thing about this announcement box, aside from being able to wire it, is that you can actually change the colors of texts. To do this, type this code bracket C slash a six character hex color code colon then the text you want to put then another bracket. For my announcement box, I want the message to have the ordinary white text but highlight the color of the station's name. So what I did was I typed you are now at then I follow it with the code. To get the color code is very simple. You can go online and google hex code and search for the color you want. Or, in my case, since I wanted the color to be the exact same color as the station, I took a screenshot of it, opened it up in Photoshop or any program with a color picker, and used the eyedropper tool, clicked on the color, and copied and typed the hex code in the game, and typed the station name like so. What I wanted to do for this is for the announcement box to be activated whenever a player passes by the station. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to use a logic sensor player above, just below the rails at the middle of the station, and wire it to the announcement box. With this, the box will announce your arrival whenever the player passes through. The downside to this is, logic sensor player above fires the trigger twice. Once when you pass by, and another when you leave. But sometimes it doesn't. It will also announce your arrival even if you don't ride the rails and just walk inside the subway platform. The second way is to use a pressure plate track on the rails at the middle of the subway platform. Using this method, the announcement will only fire once when you pass through the pressure plate track. However, if you stop before ever passing through the plate, your arrival will not be announced at all. I personally preferred the first way, but any of the two methods work just fine. So that is how you make an arrival announcement mechanism. Hey guys, I hope this video wasn't too confusing and I'm really hoping this helped you in your building endeavors. 
I'm sorry it's been taking me too long to make these videos, but I had some last minute ideas that I wanted to put in and also got really really busy. I'm still getting the hang of it, but I really want to make good quality videos and I don't want to rush things just so I can release every week. I do aim to release weekly when I've gotten used to things, but for now, I can't make any promises. All I can tell you is that I aim to release videos every Thursday, but if you don't see a video at that time, then the next video may come next week. Also, the main builds that will be featured in this channel are mostly buildings and stuff you find in the city. But if you guys have some suggestions for builds that you want to see in my channel, Comment down below, and if I can make them, then I'll make a video about them in between my city builds. Well, that's all for now, and I'm just gonna do my thing, and you do your thing, and I'll see you guys later!